Wonderful. Um, I'll hand over to you then. Do you want to, yeah, are you happy thanks. to share your screen? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna share my screen. Wonderful, thank you for joining and um, giving us an insight into the, the plans of the European Commission. Okay, thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, just to, to give you a bit of, um, of an update really on, on what's happening with uh, the MPs at the European Commission. And if we can go to the next. Um, uh, you have to minimize all your windows, I think. Are they are they not all minimized? Uh, it seems fine. There are some bars on the top. Ah, now yes, okay, great. So uh, first of all, uh, for us, it's all connected, uh, of course, to open science, which we give a lot of emphasis and and support in our uh, policy. Uh, we believe that. Uh, it can improve the quality, efficiency, and creativity of research. Um, it can help against the reproducibility crisis. And of course, uh, as we have seen also in the current pandemic that we are going through, uh, it has been really um, vital to be able to share uh, results of research very quickly and as openly as possible. And uh, this, of course, can help to create new research findings and also uh, reduce inequalities. Um, and uh, we connect, of course, correct data management um, and data management plans to uh, fair data. So for us, this is really interchangeable. And we see also a lot of opportunity costs that we are actually losing uh, of, because we don't have uh, fair data. Uh, and yeah, in the next uh, slide, you can see an evolution of our policies. So just to talk more about the data management plans, uh, that's a bit too fast. <laughs> um, so we, we really started requesting uh, data management plans um, in 2014. So this coincided with the uh, open data research, uh, open research data pilot at that point. And um, after that, in 2017, this became um, the default uh, option for beneficiaries, but we used to allow, so in Horizon 2020, we used to allow to have exceptions. And that meant that if someone uh, would uh, opt out of the open research data pilot, they did not have to submit a data management plan. Uh, now, this will be a big change in Horizon Europe. And I think uh, tools like DMP uh, online help a lot is that anyone, even if they have reasons to not share their data, uh, they will uh, be requested to uh, submit a data management plan. And this will be uh, a sort of uh, no, no way out uh, option uh, for, for any beneficiary. So, uh, because we believe, as I said in the beginning, that this uh, basically is responsible data management and, and by having a DMP, at the beginning of, of the project, at, at an early stage of the project, this helps uh, to, to have proper data management. And eventually, our goal is to have uh, reuse of, of those uh, data sets. And can we move on? So what we expect to see in Horizon Europe, uh, these are still uh, sort of uh, not, not fully uh, agreed upon, but very likely to, to happen. Uh, we will see also some early uh, research data management considerations at the proposal stage so that they will be evaluated uh, before the grant is awarded, which so far was not happening. So it will be not a DMP uh, per se, but it will be something like a skeleton, let's say, of, of a DMP. But it is important to have this also at the evaluation uh, stage. And then, uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, we want the data management plan to be uh, accompanying every single project, uh, no matter whether uh, beneficiaries will share data openly or they are not able to, and they will ask for an exception. Uh, and ideally, and this is something that um, we have discussed with, <laughs> with uh, colleagues at DCC, but uh, we will see how this can become a reality, but we would like the DMP to be a living document that is updated through the lifetime of the project. 
and to, uh, again, ideally be machine actionable. And this can help both the beneficiary and the funder as we collect information at the end of the project and as we do an evaluation and reporting for the project. So this can be a whole uh, workflow that basically uh, beneficiaries do not have to uh, enter and re-enter uh, the same information again and again, but this moves across a pipeline of, of services and what you state in your DMP in the beginning uh, actually can be your reporting at the end. So there, there's still things to, to figure out uh, there, but um, what we hope to happen with the DMP is that beneficiaries think about data early. So they don't wait until they have the data until they publish, and then they decide what do we do with the data. But so we expect data to be uploaded in the repository uh, again, to the extent possible to have APID associated and to have metadata in line with the fair principles. Uh, and again, depending on how things develop, uh, we have some uh, requirements that will um, uh, possibly make an obligation to use uh, repositories federated under EOS, the European Open Science Cloud, and to provide open access, uh, for example, with Creative Commons uh, licenses. And Next, please. Uh, one thing that we are actually pushing a lot in, in Horizon Europe and was not the case before is to mention strongly other research outputs. So we have been also in discussion with funders like uh, the Volcan Trust and others, and they have, for example, changed the, the, even their language and asked for data. Um, uh, 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 how is it called? Not data management language, but uh, research output management plans or something like that. So, okay, we did not do that, but we want to make sure that uh, other outputs, like for example, software or uh, protocols, workflows or models, or even to the extent, again, possible physical um, outputs uh, can be shared openly with, with others. Uh, they should also be described in the DMP. So we will encourage this uh, very strongly this is likely not to be a, a sort of legal requirement, but again, it's a cultural change and we want to see more and more outputs of those uh, Horizon Europe projects being shared with the wider uh, community. Uh, for, in some cases, we, we are still working with uh, several stakeholders to even understand what this means. So for example, for software, uh, software is a special case and although some of the uh, fair principles apply to, uh, to software as well as a, as a digital object. Uh, we know that there are efforts uh, in RDA and in Elixir and in other places, uh, and we are in contact to, to see how, and then uh, I forget, not to forget the Research Software Alliance as well. So as people are adapting and evolving the fair principles to cover uh, software more accurately, we want to be able to reflect that in the data management plans as well. Uh, again, this uh, from the funder side will be uh, required and we hope that this um, will, will help us to address the reproducibility crisis and maximize the impact of, of new research outputs. Next, I believe we have an example, yes. Um, so what we did during, uh, when the pandemic started around uh, April, we launched the European COVID-19 data platform. And this was a collaborative uh, effort from the European Commission, MLBI, the European Bioinformatics Institute and Elixir plus other partners and the member states. Um, so this was, this is still, because it's still being developed uh, and, and used by, by many um, scientists and not only around the world. Um, this is uh, an example of fair data in action and, and what uh, correct data management should look like, uh, especially addressing uh, the case of a pandemic where it matters a lot to have data quickly and as openly uh, shared as possible in line with the FAIR uh, principles. So this platform, for example, um, showed that the researchers need to have quick and unrestricted access to, to various data sources and that uh, the more this is done with correct data management, with the Amazon plans and fair data, uh, this helps uh, a lot in advancing and accelerating uh, research. 
And then uh, just a few words on, on what else uh, we did. This is both in relation to, to the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, we updated and launched new guidelines for Horizon 2020 projects um, to, to actually go beyond their uh, current obligations and to make an effort to have uh, more open data that can be quickly shared um, among, among the researchers. We also uh, launched a, a group in RDA for COVID-19 guidelines. And this was an amazing response with more than 350 people all around the world working together uh, to, to form guidelines on how to best share data under a health emergency. And uh, indeed, this was really an eye opener on how quickly people work together and how RDA was able to uh, sort of uh, divide the work uh, into different subgroups and deliver in, in record time. And finally, um, we also collaborated with Open Air uh, to have a COVID-19 gateway, again, to enable better discovery of uh, data sets and other research outputs as well. And the next one, please. Um, so here's where we try to get a bit more practical, right? And we connect, as I said in the beginning, uh, per data with responsible data management and the data management plan plays a very important role here. But be besides a funder requesting, uh, oh yes, share your data according to the FAIR principles, what does this mean in practice? And how can we make this um, sort of easier for, for beneficiaries to, to um, indeed follow the requirements? And how can we mainstream uh, FAIR practices across the scientific communities, uh, making sure that uh, when data are shared, uh, they're not just open data that cannot be reused, but they're data that have added value, they comply with the FAIR principles, and therefore they, uh, they will be reused by other people that can build on top of, of that uh, research. Uh, one thing we, we noticed was that um, it's not easy to compare uh, when you try to, to assign a sort of, um, not a score, but let's say, uh, judge the fairness of, of the data set uh, and how, how can we move from something more abstract uh, to, to more concrete uh, indicators for fairness. And we have two examples that I want to mention very briefly, the RDA working group on the FAIR data maturity model and uh, FAIRWARE initiative. So uh, the FAIR data maturity model was a group in RDA uh, now it's still a working group, but in the maintenance uh, phase. So the group worked for 18 months to, to actually develop a, a, what can be called a Lego uh, building blocks of fairness, uh, which is in practice a set of indicators. Uh, it's about uh, 40, 40 plus indicators. So breaking down the fair principles of uh, findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability to um, sort of give concrete uh, examples of what people should do to make their data uh, more fair and uh, explain in, in guidelines uh, what the indicator is about and how it can be satisfied. Uh, so we hope uh, there's, uh, there's actually a link in this slide. So uh, later when you, um, when we share the slides, you can see, we can, you can see that uh, we published this in the Code Data Data Science Journal as a paper. You can also have access to the RDA uh, recommendation. It's on the RDA website. Um, so this is an effort to both align uh, and harmonize fair assessment, but also it can be used as a, as a self-assessment tool by researchers. And uh, this would be interesting, I, I believe, moving forward to, to see how data management plans can connect to this sort of assessment to give an idea to, to a scientist, to a researcher of how am I doing? Um, the way I plan to share uh, and store and um, uh, sort of archive data, uh, am I reaching a sort of level of fairness? Although we don't want to be very pres prescriptive and create new metrics that uh, you know people can be taken aback and, and say we, we don't need perhaps uh, uh, more stringent uh, metrics, but we see this as 
has a change in, in the behavior of, of people and uh, sort of more uh, a self-improvement uh, tool. And at the same time, the indicators can also be used by different uh, evaluation methods, like for example, automatic evaluation of fairness, like uh, people are trying to do, uh, to have a common baseline and know that by using these indicators, we can actually perhaps uh, have them reflected in a score, but be able to compare across different evaluation methods. And uh, the final slide, uh, we can uh, mention briefly the Fairware initiative, which is uh, coming from uh, the research on Research Institute that actually started from uh, World Camp Trust in the UK and other funders. And uh, we are collaborating through our um, Horizon 2020 Paris Fair project. And um, this Fairware uh, initiative uh, ideally would like to create an open source tool to be able to judge the fairness uh, of, a, of a data set. But again, not to create um, a burden to, to uh, researchers and scientists by uh, sort of uh, only uh, introducing new, uh, new rules, let's say, for, for fair data, but to, to actually create this uh, different levels of, of maturity of, of a data set and be able, uh, and scientists and uh, researchers be able to uh, improve their data sets. And at the same time, ideally uh, funders also being able to check or repositories being able to check whether a uh, data set complies with certain um, uh, requirements uh, for, for fair data and fair digital objects. And um, I mentioned, of course, repositories because uh, this, uh, there's one more slide, sorry, yes. Um, uh, repositories um, for us are actually even seen sometimes as a proxy. So if uh, the data are shared in what we call um, uh, fair enabling repositories, so uh, certified or trustworthy repositories, um, we can be uh, sort of more confident that uh, the data will be fair to a level that is acceptable. And again, the fair data maturity model works uh, towards that way. And um, we want to see that uh, more and more this is being taken up uh, and we are aware that we go basically from people that have not heard of, of uh, the FAIR principles to uh, people in disciplines that um, are very much uh, ahead and they're trying to, to create data sets that are, as we say, born FAIR. So it's not, we're not talking more about verification, but we're talking about uh, data that uh, from the get-go, they have a, a certain level of, uh, of fairness. Um, I think that's all from our side. I mean, my colleague Carlos is also here. If he wants to add anything or we're happy to take any questions and we want to have this um, closer collaboration with, with tools like uh, the DMP online in making all this a reality. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Costas and Carlos. Um, good teamwork there on the slides.